Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Logan and I am so excited to show you the Goblins and Gardens Tarot deck by John Sasha or John Sacha. It's S-A-C-H-A. -A. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but he's done a fabulous job. So this deck was on Kickstarter last year, 2021, um, and I knew on site that I had to have it. <laughs> it combines two of my favorite things, which are gardening and Dungeons and Dragons. And it does this through a collage of old gardening encyclopedias and old D&D &D manuals and modules. Um, the back of the box reads, Welcome to a world where you will find no masters, no heroes, no rewards for quests complete, no spoils of war, nor plunder of dungeons, and no evil for good to meet. Welcome to a world of daydreamers, water watchers, sunbathers, tree talkers, flower feelers, fruit eaters, layabouts, and lollygaggers. Which is my crowd. Welcome to the Jubilee at the end of the world. Welcome to every story that's been left behind. Welcome to Goblins and Gardens. Goblins and Gardens is a tarot deck featuring artwork collaged together from gardening encyclopedias and Dungeons and Dragons books and modules. So, what are we waiting for? Let's open the gate. And yeah, let's. Um, this deck comes with a little white book, which is extremely thoughtfully written. Um, the entries are very small, arguably, but you get four keywords and then a paragraph or three, um, or sometimes four, about each card, and it's really lovely. Um, it's a little white book that I'm actually going to read in full because it really helps to acquaint you with the world that these creatures live in, um, and it's brilliant. It's really brilliant. I'm very thankful for it. So we're going to take a look at a couple entries from that as we're going through this deck. We have a very pretty um, gold gilt edge. I know a lot of people are not a fan of gold gilding on card edges. This one, however, from just from the moment I took it out of the box, none of the cards stuck together. It doesn't stick up from the cards to create like a weird tactile catchy experience. Um, it seems like a really high quality. The backs, I'm not sure what these are. I'm assuming it's something from D&D. &D. Um, I've played a good amount of d and I'm just not familiar with things from older modules, I guess. Um, and the finish is like a glossy linen, and so it shuffles like a dream. It's average tarot height and a bit wider than your standard tarot deck, um, but because it's not extremely thick cardstock, it's very comfortable to handle. Um, and also, it's not like flimsy. It's, it's nice and sturdy. So, let's go through these shall we? So for the Queen of Cups, I'm not sure what this monster is, but I like them a lot. They look elegant and poised, but also like they could ruin your world, and I admire that. <laughs> um, we have Nine of Cups. So because D&D &D artwork has changed, at least in my opinion, so much over the years, a lot of the time I can't really tell what I'm looking at as far as what kind of monster or creature it is. Um, without consulting the guidebook because, you know, just these designs change so much through the decades. I do really love this Five of Wands. Uh, wands we're going to see are portrayed with flowers with like long stalks or stems or what have you. Coins tend to be edible things like berries, you know, vegetation. Um, cups are going to be succulents and cacti for the most part, and then swords are going to be ferns, which I'm all about. I find the strength card particularly beautiful. It's just John's mix of imagery is, it's just breathtaking. I think I read that it took him around two years to make this, just him and his, uh, his exacto knife, and I can totally understand why. It's breathtaking, it's thoughtful. It reads really well, um, and getting to know the characters and the scenarios presented in each card is, it's really special and it's really enjoyable. Um, I've had, I've used this deck a good few times now, which is why it's out of order. <laughs> and um, the readings have been really lovely, really, really lovely and very clear. Um, I love this hermit because I myself identify as a, <laughs> A suspect looking little goblin, you know, so a hooded figure prancing through a garden. I mean, surely on totally innocuous business because there are no 
human adventurers here to have to defend themselves from. Uh, but this is this is totally a mood, and, and I'm here for it. Two of Wands. And yeah, the colors in this deck, from everything being, I guess, so retro, so vintage, even though it kind of hurts my brain to call something from the 80s or 70s retro and vintage. Because, um, like, good lord, we're, we're in 2022 now. What does that make the 90s? Oh, I shudder to think. Um, the Hierophant, we have this, I was about to say Khajiit, we have this Tabaxi down here. The write up for this one was interesting as well. Um, one of my favorite cards in the entire deck is the Devil. Liches, great. Strawberries, great. Put them together, perfection. Um, I have a sticker of this, a nice big vinyl sticker that's on the back of my iPad, and it's one of my favorite things. One of my favorite things. Love that Devil card. Uh, the Hanged Man, I appreciate we have two figures down here, and then this one lurking up top. Um, clearly about to wreck some shit, perhaps. The High Priestess, I enjoy the amount of like a burlesque vibe that this has. The bright flowers, the brightly lit cavern ceiling and whatnot. Uh, this is a show, like, yes, she knows what's going on, or they know what's, um, what, what goes unspoken, but they also know how to put on a show. Um, very, very, very drag. Uh, two of coins, we have some Brussels sprouts. The chariot cracks me up, because I'd like to think that all these weapons belong to the rest of this adventuring party. Um, adventuring, they're here ruining crap, obviously. And so, the fact that we have this one, this thing, driving through on what I think is a lawnmower, <laughs> and just wrecking them, and these two are like, oh shit! I love it, I think it's fantastic. Uh, you can also catch this design with the critter on the lawnmower on the uh, Goblins and Gardens website as a t-shirt. I have one of those as well, it's really cute. Uh, six of coins, love a succubus moment. 10 of cups, I really enjoy the imagery here. We don't get a lot of wintry vibes in this deck that I recall, uh, and so this one really speaks to me. Also love the architecture in it. Eight of coins. <laughs> right after I say we don't get a lot of wintry uh, shit in the deck, right? Um, this one is very beautiful too. I love, I love berries and any sort of art for some reason. Um, a knight of coins, we have a lot of vegetation. Lovely centaur. The tower. Really like the colors in this one. It's very dramatic. I apologize if my hands are shaking for a bit. They tend to do that sometimes. The Emperor. I find it interesting because we have this very modern structure over here, and yet D and D creatures. Really enjoy the Six of Cups. Three of Swords. Not sure what those are, but they look foreboding or intimidating. Um, the Fool. This is the artwork from the cover. I love this card. I think it's fantastic. They're so happy with their, what, their Lotus, and it looks like maybe a leek in their other hand. Um, and they're just here to greet you. Like, I brought flowers. I have stuff we can snack on. Let's have a quick snack, jump back up to my sky pad, and just get to know each other and have a good time, you know? Very trusting. Very sweet. Um, Three of Wands. I love this one. I just, his collage style does the right things for me. Um, Four of Wands, very interesting with the pink and green and lots of gray in my opinion. Love it. The Lovers, look at that fearsome face. Getting all those apples. Page of Wands. I need to look up and see what these white flowers are because they also appeared, I think, in the um, strength card and I'm curious. Death, to me this one is almost humorous. It's so like, what what goons up here? It's um, it's ridiculous, and I'm here for it. Also, like, scary monsters, skulls, and then vegetation is just funny. I like it a lot. Uh, Seven of Coins. I really enjoy this one. I feel like it really hits the solitary vibe of the Seven of Coins. Twenty is Judgment. Three of Cups. Try to pick up the pace a little bit so we're not here until next week. Ten of Swords, more ferns. Knight of Swords, I love most of the knights have some sort of winged creature in them and I appreciate that.
characters and the movement it implies. Five of coins. Things are pretty rough. They've lost their tree, but at least they have this vegetation, right? Nine of wands. I love these. Are these trillium? I'm not sure what these tripetaled flowers are, but I love them, and that is a scary looking swan like creature, I guess. Ten of wands. I love this because it's beautiful. It's all as you want it, but should you really be carrying this much, we can barely see you anymore for all of your burden, right? Seven of swords. Those are a lot of sharp implements behind that uh, minotaur. Four of swords. I love this because the background gives me Scooby-Doo, first of all. Um, and then we have, it's not like a, an intimidating or ominous sort of presence with the mummy here and the background like this. It's just their natural habitat and they're just having a rest, which is what the Four of Swords is all about. So I appreciate it from the mummy's perspective. I think that was clever. Temperance looking really lovely. Queen of Wands. All right, I do want to find and read the entry for this card because uh, Queen of Wands is generally the significator I use for myself, uh, being that she's spicy. And let's read. I'm going to try to hold two of these. Hopefully you can see, see this somewhat well. Queen of Wands. So for keywords, we have social, shadows, determined, and luster. The entry reads, nothing can contain the Arrhenius. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry. I'm guessing that's this creature's name. They beam with autonomy reclaimed, social and vibrant, now cultivating vast gardens throughout all hells. Every devil can enjoy spreading wildflowers, and after all, why shouldn't they? Go out, get out all the candelabras and light all the chandeliers. Tonight we celebrate. We demons all owe a great debt to you, our queen. Your light shines bright and your charisma illuminates every corner of every room. Knowing you is knowing community, candor, independence, and charm. What a lady. I think that's a badass write-up for the Queen of Wands. Um, I'm completely here for it. I love the art of this card. I love, I just, I just love it. And then that, that uh, card meaning entry in the little white book just sent it over the top for me. Absolutely here for it. Queen of Swords. Um, this is a very intimidating harpy. I would not want to mess with them. King of Coins. I don't know what this is. Its nose gives me carrot, but I don't know what this is which is not a read, it's still a good card. Queen of Coins, these nails. Ace of Wands, I really enjoy uh, that we have the Fearsome Beholder and then very similarly shaped right next to it, we have a dandelion head. <laughs> it's like the juxtaposition of like fearsome and aw, or whatever is, is really enjoyable in this deck. King of Cups, feeling crabby, the star. I need to take a better look at this one to see what exactly all is going on there, but it's it's chock full. Four of Cups, another hooded robed figure, like in the Hermit, which I adore, especially when they're not up to like nefarious shit, just minding their own business, chilling. It's good shit, that. Two of Cups, Page of Coins. <laughs> this little guy also cracks me up. Five of Swords. Uh, let's look at this entry. I'm not going to pull out every single entry, I promise. But I did think it had an interesting sentiment about it for the Five of Swords. So for keywords, we have abandoned, conflict, stoic, and pyrrhic. Fog still hangs heavy around Ilnaval. Thick curtains suffocate his mind in the afternoon sun. The god of war holds not his sword, but a narrow leaf strap fern. Which, yeah unperturbed, savoring its restorative nature. He hopes maybe someday he'll learn to breathe only these deep, calm breaths. Now the sun is setting, and the loss that lingers is a window into other worlds. Conflict is natural, but if you become its pursuant, you risk unraveling. Don't rush this. Conclusions will come to you soon. I really appreciate the line about conflict being natural, but if you become its pursuant, you'll start unraveling, and I think that's a really excellent line for the Five of Swords. There's so much conflict, it's so easy to get wrapped up in the bitterness of it. Um, and I think having this tall monster trying to keep his shit together and not go off on this we, we thing, I think it's fitting. Six of Swords, very intimidating. 
Um, really enjoy the island vibes of this too. Five of Swords, Six of Swords. Nine of Swords, I need my glasses. <laughs> um, so this deck, this deck I feel like is for anyone who would enjoy something quirky, who enjoys vintage art, who enjoys collage, Dungeons and Dragons, and or gardening. I used to love to garden. I had a really great flower garden back in Louisiana before I moved to PA. Um, and it had oh, irises, datura. I tried growing foxglove, didn't have a lot of luck. A still be um, hibiscus, like I miss growing flowers so much. Uh, we have an apartment here, so that's why I haven't been able to pick it back up here. But I'm excited because the summers are much more forgiving in PA, so I can actually tend gardens in the summer and not let heat intolerance drive me indoors at the uh, detriment of my plants. So it's going to be a good time. Anyway, Eight of Cups. I really appreciate this alligator leaving, leaving this pond behind, possibly. Moving on to better things. Justice cracks me up. Uh, I love it because you have the humans who have clearly been, you know, terrorizing these creatures for a long time, getting what they had coming. Uh, we have demonic bull situations happening. We have killer corn. We have corn that... that <laughs> I can't think of the word for it. The stuff that sprouts off at the end. This one is giving me very, like, if Elvis Presley and 45 had a corn child... <laughs> That would be this corn overlord, but I just think it's fucking funny. I, I like it a lot. Magician. I love this magician card. I think it's fantastic. It feels so natural to me that like somebody who is going to be in these scholarly pursuits, in these mystical uh, or occult pursuits, like of course they're going to have plants and herbs all over their desks, uh, that they're, you know, working with the properties of recording scientific experiments with etc and then also having plants and things growing off of their shelves like it's it's a vibe it's a vibe i can get behind so i love that magician card knight of wands very pretty i think these are columbine i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly but uh i've groomed these before i think they're technically like a weed in or maybe wildflower is the word in states like colorado uh, Seven of Cups, we have more succulents. This little guy makes me think of the lizard people from Dark Souls, and I always, <gasps> just a little bit when I see it, because um, they, they still freak me out. Aside from that one nice one you need. Um, wheel of Fortune, we have the elements along the wheel here. Uh, I need to read the booklet to see the significance of all the little critters. They're all reading, which I find very interesting. I didn't notice that before. What are they reading? <laughs> I need to look and see. King of Wands, also beautiful. I love this little critter guy. Um, the flowers are excellent. Irises are some of my favorite flowers, so super excited to see him show up in the King of Wands. It's beautiful. Knight of Cups, this is another favorite card of mine. Uh, the pinks in this deck are fantastic, so whenever we come across a card that has outstanding pink, it always, it always makes me happy. But I also really love these Merhorse situations. They're gorgeous. I used to draw them a lot as a kid, so seeing one in this deck is really nostalgic and fantastic. Page of Swords. What's up with these legs? I don't know what that is. King of Swords. I need to shuffle this better. We have like a clump of court cards, but they're terrifying, right? The Empress. Lots of vegetation. Five of Cups. I do enjoy how barren this feels. This feels in keeping for the card for me. Four of coins. With these asparagus. Very interesting. I love the darkness in the background and this bleary maybe moon or something over here. I find it very interesting. We're getting towards the end here. Eight of wands. I don't know what this is, but it's terrifying to me. Ace of Swords. Very cute. Very cute. Um, we're on the last two. So we have the Moon, which is another one of my favorite cards. Uh, again, because excellent use of pink. We have... I can't tell if this is cloud line with sun or moonlight coming from behind it, or if this is like a shore. It's probably clouds. But it gives me tidal feelings anyway. Um, and it's just... It's fantastic. We also have a Moon back here that this monster is standing in front of. 
I love it. I just, I love it. Um, I also think the card titles uh, done in this collage way of their own, like ransom note style, is perfect for the deck. And then for the six of coins, whoops, nine of coins, seriously, I need to grab my glasses. We have this mica something, I think. It's like a, a fungus person, which I am well acquainted with from reading a lot of R.A. Salvatore books. Um, at least I think that's what it is. Hanging out with, you know, some nuts. So we have what I think is hazelnuts. I'm not sure what that one is. Uh, almonds, pecans, or depending on where you're from, pecans. So, yeah, that's the Goblins and Darkness Tarot. Um, I think it's, I think it's fantastic. It's one of the most interesting decks that I have happened upon in a few years. And for that, I am very appreciative. Because, you know, we work with these tools a lot, right? They mean a great deal in a lot of our lives. They provide a lot of comfort, they provide a lot of guidance, and not just to us, you know, like a lot of times to friends of ours and such too. So to have an entry in my collection that feels this special and this unique and has such humor and lightheartedness to it, and a beautifully thoughtful uh, little white book, I'm just very grateful. So by all means, do check out the Goblins and Gardens Tarot deck. Uh, at goblinsandgardenstarot.com, not tarot, oof, goblinsandgardens.com. Uh, it's fantastic, it's affordable, um, the creator's a really nice guy, so check it out. In the meantime, thank you so much for hanging out with me and looking at this deck, and I hope you have a beautiful day.